of this is sine x, right? Sine x starts at zero, goes up to one at pi over two, back down to pi, and so on. Keeps repeating like that, right? If you want the derivative of that function, you're looking at the slope of the thing. If you draw it somewhat accurately, the slope in the middle there is one. So this dot is representing the value, and it's going to trace out the derivative graph of this. All right, the slope there is is one. As you move across here, okay, the slope is getting less, right? So it's going down, slope slowly going down, and then it starts more quickly going down, right? And it gets to, at this point right here, what does it get to? Gets to zero, right, at that point? So the slope zero, what happens to the slope after that? It's, uh, yeah, it gets more negative, right? It's negative. It's going to have its minimum slope, like the lowest negative slope is going to be right there, right? That's where it's negative one. Okay, it's going downhill, negative one. And then it starts to flatten out again, right? So it goes like that. So hopefully you've drawn something like that. Now again, this is not a proof. We're just uh, we're just looking at it graphically and seeing what what we get. If you keep going here, just to be uh, if I go slow enough, it'll fill in all the dots. But um, it's just going to be repetitive then, right? The same cycle. What graph is that? The red one. That is cosine, right? Cosine happens to be the derivative of sine, right? Because it's just the slopes of the graphs, those values, right? Cosine is the derivative of sine, all right? So on your uh, on your page, hopefully, hopefully in your graph that you've discovered that that you had the you have the cosine graph drawn here. Okay, I'm not going to draw it up here, but you hopefully have the cosine graph drawn there, just those slopes that match up. Now, I wasn't asking this here because I wanted you to do the derivative of the derivative, but once you have the cosine graph there, we also want to know what the derivative of um, we want to know what the derivative of cosine is. We, if you're skipping ahead to the page after, the derivative of sine is cosine, but we also want to know now what's the derivative of cosine. All right, so you uh, you can make a prediction and then check it out if you have your cosine graph. Right? If you take your cosine graph here and then graph the slopes, go through the same process all right, and do that. I know you want it to be looking at because I know you're all you know, good at looking for patterns and everything. And it would be nice, a nice reciprocal relationship here if cosine was the derivative of sine and sine was the derivative of cosine, but it's not. Okay, This is not sine over here. Um, if you want to look at the graph, we can do the same kind of thing. This is the graph of cosine, right? Cosine starts at 1 and goes down from there. If you look at the slopes of this then, right? if we go here, this is going to not even let me grab that point. Why not? Oh, because I'm going to grab this point instead. right? If you, uh, if you start with this point here, the slope is 0, right? so that graph starts at 0, and then it starts to go downhill here, right? It's going downhill. It's negative for the first half, right? It's its minimum slope, and then it hits zero again here. And then as you keep going, it's positive now for the next stretch. So that thing's up above, and then it's back to zero, and then this pattern keeps repeating, right? So that is definitely not the sine graph, but it's related to the sine graph. It's a transformed sine graph. What graph is that? Negative sine, negative sine x. Okay, it's negative sine x. Right, it's a reflected sine graph. It's a sine graph that is turned upside down there, right? So the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. All right. I know it would be really nice. Negative sine x. It'd be really nice and friendly if they could be each other's derivatives, but they're not, right? Hey, want to be my derivative? Sure, but do you want to be my derivative? No, not a chance. I want something. I want to be. It's kind of a one-way relationship. I, I, I don't want you to be my derivative. In fact, I want the opposite of you to be my derivative, right? It's the complete opposite with the negative there. The negative is important, right? I'm so not looking for you, a derivative like you. I'm looking for the exact opposite of you. Okay, that's very nice, isn't it? <laughs> what? Um, these are going to be things you just need to know, okay? Are we okay with this? You think you can memorize that? You're just going to know it. You're going to use it so often that you're going to know those two, okay? 
Derivatives of the other trig functions, maybe you won't memorize so easily, but you'll just, you'll learn those. I wouldn't sweat it. If you want to work out derivatives of functions, as long as you know those two, you can figure it out, right? Say, for instance, if you want to work out the derivative of that weird function, what's the derivative of that weird function? 3 cos x plus sine x. Very good. You change it to plus because derivative of minus cos has got to be plus sine, right? If there's already a minus there, or you could think of it as minus negative sine. Anyways, some of these are going to involve your product rule and your quotient rule. Can you work on the next few questions there? You might have to think about product rule or quotient rule. You might actually have to use some trig identities. Okay? Just like you would any other kind of algebra.